A global pandemic, nuclear war, chemical attack, natural disasters. Hey, what about a zombie apocalypse? All these things have one thing in common: preparation. Preparation is the difference between life and death. So call it an emergency bag, a survival kit, a bug out bag, whatever you call it. We should all have one ready, just in case. But what do you put in it? What are you prepping for? Earthquakes? Zombies? In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the most versatile things you should be stocking in case of any emergency. The stuff that will be helpful in all these scenarios. Number one, you're going to want a hiking bag, something lightweight, something that fits a lot in it. Everything I'm going to be recommending will be in the description below. I've also done a full article with a few more options. So if you don't like the hiking bag I've recommended, or it's not suitable for yourself, check out the article, see what else is on there. Well, that's step one: a hiking bag. Number two, and the most important thing, is water. With water, you want one gallon per person per day. Now, as a side note. One of the downfalls of water is it's one of the heaviest things, and it takes up the most space. If you can eliminate things like bottle weight, you can carry a lot more water with you. So these camping bags, they fit like 10 liters of water in. You can have those ready in your house, in your basement. If you need to head out in an emergency, just take the bag with you, or pop it in your car. You're good to go. However, water is going to run out sooner or later, and we don't know how long. This emergency is going to last. In which case, you need water purification tablets. The last thing you want in the case of an emergency is drinking some water that's going to make you sick. Then we have food. You've got to eat, right? That goes without saying. Non-perishable food is your best bet. Don't bother with the fresh vegetables. They're low calorie and they go off. Don't be a numb nut. Get the non-perishable stuff. We're talking. Hand food and check the dates on it, would you? If it's got a best before, you can eat it long after. It might just not taste as nice. But if it's got an expiry date, that's long gone. Forget about it. Don't get it. Canned food with long expiry dates. You also want a can opener. Even if all the cans you've got are ring pulls, you've got to understand you might be in the situation where you have to head out and get more food. In which case, you can't be relying on cans that don't have a ring pull. So you need a can opener. But what kind of foods will you be wanting? Well, you want those high carb foods, things like peanut butter. You want dry foods like granola or powdered and dehydrated foods that you can rehydrate and that won't take up a lot of space. After that, you want some fire starting equipment, lighters, windproof matches. You know those things where you like clap them together and you're. And it lets sparks off. You're gonna want those. The best thing to do is just head to Amazon, get a fire starting kit like this one. It's gonna have a little bit of everything in there: medical equipment, plasters, bandages, antiseptic wipes, medicine for you, tailor-made for you. I don't know what kind of medical issues you have. Only you know that. So get medicine that you're gonna need. Paracetamol is a good go-to. But once again, don't be a silly goose. Check the date. Last thing you want is to be stockpiling paracetamol that's expired and you can't even use. Use your noggin. Now there are a lot of situations where electronic devices may be deemed unusable. Things like a nuclear attack is going to wipe out all the electrics in the area. So in which case you need a torch because those nights they're going to be dark. You're not going to have all these street lights. You're not going to have lights from houses. It's going to be super dark. Get yourself a torch. You're also going to want a radio. Now, a radio is one of the most important things in this survival kit after water. Because let's face it, the most reasonable emergency that you're going to need your survival kit for is going to be something like a natural disaster, like an earthquake. In which case, the thing that you really need is to contact the outer world. Is to let people know. Where you are, you can't rely on a phone to do that. So you're going to need a radio, and you're going to want a battery-powered radio, a weather radio, or like a crank radio. We can just turn it up and crank it up. In the case of a battery-powered radio and your torch, you're going to need extra batteries. 
an emergency blanket. Not just great for keeping warm, but you can build a shelter out of it. You can block out a window. What about if it's like a radioactive emergency? In which case you've got to take all your clothes off if you've been outside. You're going to want to keep warm. Get the blanket on, emergency blanket, add it to your kit. A whistle is a brilliant thing to have in your kit. Why? It's lightweight, it doesn't take up a lot of space. You can wear it around your neck and you just look like you know what's going on. Situation is a zombie apocalypse. You see a new group of people, you want to join their group. They see that you've got a whistle around your neck, you are instantly the leader. You just look like you know what's going on. You look like a leader. Right, emergency, blow your whistle. You see someone in the distance, you want to get their attention, blow your whistle. Also, a Swiss army knife. You can get one with a can opener, and then you don't need a can opener, and a Swiss army knife. You can cut things, you can stab things, you can, you know, you can do all sorts. Little bottle opener on it, boom, absolute necessity. Then you're gonna need a map. Once again, electronic devices are out. You can't rely on Google Maps. Don't be a donut, get a map. Then, a paracord long piece of cord you can make shelters with it you can you know lasso things with it what if you're in a big group of people and someone starts freaking out get your paracord out tie them up to a chair give them a time out until they calm down perfect a face mask at this point we're probably all familiar with face masks the use for them the need for them and we probably already have one you want a good face mask not just for pandemic but once again radiation you don't want to be breathing in all that nuclear air into your lungs so get yourself a face mask energy tablets okay what if you need to run what if you need to burn off a lot of energy what if you've been rationing your food not very well and you're running low energy tablet pop one of those you're good to go and never underestimate the use of some good cleaning wipes the last thing you want as i've mentioned in a disaster in an emergency is getting sick for something unrelated to the emergency you know, I spoke about water and the importance of it, but let me just stress once again why water is so important. You need to have water in your body and you need to keep the water you have in your body in your body. Something that you don't want to happen is that there's a disaster going on, there's an emergency, you're outside fumbling around, touching all these God knows what. You touch your lips a little bit, you scratch your nose, you scratch, you got a little bit of dust in your eye, you get you know, get that dust out of your eye. Next thing you know, you've got diarrhea. All your fluids are just being drained from your body and you've not got enough water to replenish your fluids. So just a couple of cleaning wipes, right? Gives things a little bit of a clean down before you start touching them. Give your hands a little clean down. Bit of sanitizer, yeah? Sanitize those hands. Finally, you're gonna want some documents. Medical record, passport. Passport is massively important. Why do you need a passport? Let's say this emergency is war based there's going to be stations set up safe places with the army you're not going to be able to just rock up and say hey let me in they're going to want to know who are you are you a good guy are you a bad guy you can't just say hey my name's john smith look me up on your little device there they're going to match you up and say yeah that's john smith looks like him get them in like i said electronic devices might be gone there'll be no database to match you with but if you've got a passport, you just whip that out, you say, hey look, I'm a citizen, let me in this safeguarding facility, and you're good to go. But without all this, the importance is tailor making it for you. What situation is going to likely happen to you? Do you live in a country where there's lots of earthquakes or there's lots of natural disasters? You're going to prep your survival kit more around that. But with that being said, there is a few extras that I think you should consider. Highly considerable extras. The first thing is pants, but pants with lots of pockets and zips. Think cargo pants. Now they're not the most fashionable, I ain't going to lie to you, but imagine having all these pockets, each pocket can have its own thing. Boom, passport in one pocket. You can have your Swiss army knife in the other pocket, energy tablets in the other pocket. What you don't want is to be fumbling around your bag in an emergency trying to find one little thing. In the same category of fashion, shoes. And I'm not talking about your Louis Vuittons, I'm talking about comfortable hiking shoes. Something waterproof, something heavy duty, something that's going to keep the athlete's foot at bay. Now, what about pepper spray? You never know what situation you're going to be in when you're going to need to whip out the pepper spray. If you've got your cargo pants, you can put the pepper spray in your back pocket. It's always there, ready to whip out in any situation. 
Now let's talk about your mental stability. A deck of playing cards is going to come in handy, right? It's lightweight. You might be in a situation where you're locked down in one place for a pretty long period of time. Last thing you want is just to be doing nothing, just sat there thinking about the disaster at hand, letting your mental stability slip away. You know, you want to be able to just play a little quick game of solitaire, quick game of blackjack. And speaking of entertainment, what about a book? You might finally have the time to read that autobiography you've been wanting to read. So have a good book ready. More on the useful side of books, what about a foraging book? The best thing to do in most situations is to get yourself away from densely populated areas, which means you're not going to have access to lots of food. So foraging is going to be very important. And if you're getting a foraging book, you want to get two books. And I will tell you for why, because if you see something like a mushroom, you whip out your foraging book, you match that mushroom up with one that says it's safe to eat, you eat it, you die. Why did you die? Because you matched it with the wrong mushroom. But if you've got two books, you can cross reference. Is it definitely that one? Is it? Yeah, both books. It looks the same. It says it's safe to eat. I've got a higher chance of this not being poisonous. A sewing kit. What if you rip a hole in your nice cargo pants? You want to sew it back together. If you're a woman, what about feminine hygiene? Tampons. It's going to be very important in a situation like a zombie apocalypse. You don't want to be bleeding out everywhere and attracting the zombies with your feminine scent. And not to mention, in any likely situation where you're going to need a survival bag, you don't want to be feeling uncomfortable. Walkie talkies, if there's two of you, you want to split up a little bit, it's good to stay in contact. Duct tape. Duct tape is very important for quick fixes. You cut your arm open, duct tape it back together. Rip in your clothes, duct tape it together. You're in a safe spot and you're trying to keep out radiation from the outside. Stick a big like bin bag over your window, duct tape it around it, extra security. Quick fix, perfect. A sleeping bag. Not only is it comfortable, we can zip it right up, keep out all the creepy crawlies if you're outside. And speaking about if you're outside, if you can fit it, I recommend a tent. And finally, I recommend a portable stove. Once you've run out of water, and you've run out of water purification tablets, your go-to is going to be to boil the water. You've also got a lot of food, you probably want to cook that food. A nice hot dinner for yourself is going to go a long way. For that, you're going to need a portable stove, as well as a pot to put on it. And like I said, all the recommendations of mine for all these things are going to be in the description as well as that article, so do check that out. And now you have your bag prepared. What's next? What do you do now? Preparation. Tick. What now? Well, here's a couple of videos that may help you out in certain situations that you might unfortunately find yourself in.